viewers, welcome to today's session of The Outpouring. Precious Saints, dearly beloved people, people who are always tuned into this program, I welcome you once again to The Outpouring. Today, I'm not going to be alone. It's really nice when I have company. And I have with me today a special friend, a prophet of the Lord, a man of God. And his name is Stevenson Phillips. Now, you're not going to believe this. I have known Stevenson for years, years, years. Even when I just started this program, Stevenson would have been one of the persons that I invited to come on set with me. And we are so familiar that, you know, today in the studio I had to say, Stevenson, what is your last name? <laughs> anyway, that being said, you know, I'm really pleased to have him on today. And he flows in the prophetic and... He is uh, on point and on the dot, uh, and he also has a burden and quite a compassionate heart for those who are sick. So before I hand over to Stevenson to share what God has placed on his heart today, I want to talk just a little bit about the powerful God that we have this privilege to serve and to be a part of. You know, I read over the weekend a verse in Psalms that says that God walketh upon the winds of the wings. And I was so blown away. We know about wind and we know about hurricane force winds and winds are very powerful. God is the creator of the winds. And the psalmist said that God walketh. It. it didn't say he run it. He's not flying. He is at perfect peace. He is in so much control that he is walking on the wings of the winds. You could picture a hurricane that's packing winds of over a hundred and something kilometers and the winds are mashing up everything in its path. And here is God calmly walking on the wings of the wind. And on that note, Stevenson, I'm so glad to have you with me Thank today. You. And, you know, be at home and share with the viewers what God has placed on your heart to talk about today. So take it away. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Um, the Lord has placed on my heart um, John chapter 5 from verse 2 until 11. But this has to do with the, the important man that was at the pool at Bethesda. He's waiting there for like 38 years waiting mm -hmm. for someone to usher him into the pool because there's a, a, a story about that said pool that says that upon a certain season the angel of the Lord would descend into the water and that he would trouble, he would stir the waters so that the first one that enters into the water that he gets his healing but for 38 years he's sitting in this place and there's no one to help him and he's waiting and, and other people will just come and just bypass him and go into the pool and get the healing, get the deliverance. And he's still waiting until mm. that set time that Jesus came and, you know, reached him at the pool. So he was stuck. He was stuck. Mm -hmm. Just like this guy for me, I believe that he's like as a symbol of many people out there, you know, in TV land that's just been in one place for like all their lives. Like nothing seemed to be happening. They're just there. They're just there, no one to help them. And it's as though like you've just been wasting your life away. You know, you've just been wasted. Nothing is going on. Nothing is moving for you. You're desperate. There's no one to help you. No one cares. You're just in a place of being dysfunctional and helpless. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So you're going to read uh, that, con that text? Uh? Yes, I am. Um, John 5, starting from verse 2. I'm just going to begin from verse 1. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there is in Jerusalem near the Sheep Gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who had been there had been invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want me to, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. 
while I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Verse 8, Then Jesus said unto him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. At once the man was cured, and he picked up his mat and walked. And the day on which this took place, there was a Sabbath. And so the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. Some other translations say, you know, take up thy bed and walk. Walk, right. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. So the man was stuck. He was stuck in one place for 38 <laughs> long years. Yes. And when time and opportunity came, what he did was give excuses. Yeah. He mm. had no one to help him. Wow. Mm. And, you know, Stevenson, if I may add, um, a lot of people, a lot of even, we would have found ourselves in situations like that where you're, you're overwhelmed by a situation. It has gone on for so long that you pass a place of wanting help but in the back you still want in the back of your mind you still want help eh? but you're stuck in all the excuses and the surroundings and what this one not doing for you or that one not doing for you and you really really end up stuck yeah. and uh, i am sure that that is the case with a lot of people especially I have found that when we're dealing with sickness uh, and different ailments, uh, we tend to become paralyzed by it in our thinking and our behavior and everything. But you go ahead. You go right ahead with the word. For me, I believe mm -hmm. that this guy is the symbol of the majority of people that I've met in, you know, in the body of Christ. I've mm -hmm. been ministering for a while now. And... Um, I've met like a lot of people who aren't like as though it were like desperate to really get up and to really move on with life. And I think one of the reasons for this is the way in which Christ or the kingdom of God has been introduced to people. I mean, there are a whole lot of other psychological factors involved with people, you know, being in a place and not really wanting to get up and move because of the culture, you know, the way how the brain is made up and, and all these kinds of things. Right. But as I'm saying, it's this this for me is not just the, 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 the symbol of the people in the body of Christ who find all kinds of excuses to get up and do things. But I'm talking about the fact that there are people who are sick and people that's not well and that there are people that's suffering physically that need a miracle. Just as this man realized that he needed a miracle took up his bed and walk. I'm not just talking about the people in life where uh, this Bible said weeping may have endured for a night. For some people it's as though like the weeping that we're talking about here has gone over beyond the third and the fourth generation. That they have wept all of their lives and they are waiting for just an opportunity. Now I believe that when God created man, that God knew that all this was going to happen. But the thing is, is that we don't really have a legitimate excuse for the things that we say, like the reasons for not getting up to do anything. Because I believe that um, Pharaoh, when you talk about Pharaoh, Pharaoh isn't just the, the, the guy who, who uh, back in the times of Israel that oppressed uh, the children of God. I believe that, this, that this, the, the, the spirit. Pharaoh, the spirit, spirit. of Pharaoh, mm -hmm. is that thing that says that, that you're going to remain in this situation, that your situation is not going to change, that it's going to go beyond due date, that even if there's a word of the Lord over your situation, that it's not going to work for you, that somehow you're going to abort your potential and your destiny. But as I'm saying, one of the problems that I'm having, it's, it's the way in which Christ has been advertised or has been revealed to people, right? Because of religion and, and what, what have you, right? I believe that on the day that in spite of what you have been going through, I believe that there is an, an, an opportunity. When Jesus died on the cross, didn't, Jesus didn't just die on the cross just for the sin of man. Jesus died on the cross so that, as the Bible says, Jesus died on the cross so that the blessings of Abraham might come unto you. And the Bible also came and said that God says that he wishes above all things. 
we prosper, that you prosper and be, in good and be in good health. That is his will. And when Jesus on the cross said that it's finished, Jesus wasn't just simply saying in other words, I'm giving up my ghost or I'm going to die. Because even the death of Jesus was something that was temporal. It was just for three days. And even when Jesus died, Jesus died. And Jesus, your problems, your problems died there too. Where Jesus yeah. went, your stuff went there too. And Jesus came and he also said that he overcame the world. He's an overcomer. And if you have been identified with the Christ on the cross that died, it meant then that if he overcame in the flesh, it means that you also have what it takes in the likeness to and overcome. in the image of God mm -hmm. to be able to overcome that because Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. finished. It's Could you just deal. run that overcoming part again because it was just so profound. Just say it again. The Bible says now that, that the sons of God are waiting they are sort of like traveling and this is not a, a, a nine month thing from since back then a creation has been 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 groaning has been feeling as though it were like like traveling pangs like that of a woman in childbirth waiting for the manifestation of the sons of god that says that there's a level of warfare that's been taking place it means then that the forces of heaven has been gathered on your behalf to fight for you now, if Jesus said that it's done, what's keeping you back or what's holding you back from even walking in the fulfillment of what Jesus already said on the cross, that it's finished? Because paramount to this, before Jesus even died, I think it was mentioned somewhere in the book of Luke that the, the, there was, a, there was a, a, a tremor in the earth. There was a, there was a shaking in the earth. And the, those that were dead, that they rose. Jesus hadn't died as yet. They rose. There was a darkness over the land. And the, the, the the 60 foot curtain, the veil that separated the holy place from the holy of holies, the presence that was uh, in, in, in the holy of holies, that presence was now transferred into you so that the same power that was in that place, it's now in you. So that there's another point to note, that point, that, that power, that presence is now in you. Now, if that power and that presence is in you, I don't understand for all the people that may have internal situations dealing with blood disorders, cancers and all these things. If the, in, I think it's in biology they taught us about osmosis and they spoke about diffusion, that something that if something is in a place of a, of a, a higher, a lower concentration, it will begin to move into a place of higher concentration. Now if the presence of God in you is so powerful, if the kingdom of God in you or if the king that represents that environment or the, the domain is now in you. I do not understand. It means that what enters you or what is in you has the ability to begin to overwrite and override everything that lives in you that God did not place in you. I'm beginning to think that somehow it's like as a mindset and in a sense it's the way in which Christ has been represented, has been presented to people. So it's like all a matter of you know, a part of your thinking. I believe that if you really catch this, and if the presence of God, and if the word of the Lord, now Jesus gave this man a command. He said, now take up thy bed and walk, which means for me, it was more than just a command, but that Jesus was addressing some muscular stuff muscular trophy. I believe Jesus was addressing some, 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 some bone situation. Jesus was addressing arthritis. Jesus was addressing some, some stuff in this man's body. He was addressing some, some he was addressing the man's skin. I believe when the, the word of the Lord enters someone and it becomes a reality that there's a standard that, that, that's been raised up that says that your condition has to change because the Amen. Bible says that he sent his word mm -hmm. to heal your disease. Jesus sent a word to heal this man's disease. Because this man, the Bible says that there were people that were blind, lame, halt, people with all kinds of conditions were there too. And Jesus simply spoke, came like he came for this man. That was his season. And Jesus spoke the word and his body had to begin to obey that command. Take up thy bed and walk. His body was not getting ready to begin to make a movement that it had not made in 38 long years. I believe that there is something that I have experienced right even with where the word is concerned because we have a ministry in scarborough there right well um saturday mm -hmm. we were at your place mm -hmm. and i have seen miracles and i've seen signs and wonders taking place i mean there's some people out there who may know of me yeah mm -hmm. i have seen 
um, I don't, I'm not going to call a person's name, but we've had conditions where this, this young lady came to one of our meetings and she had a son that was, um, he, had, he couldn't speak, he's not speaking, he's going to this um, Happy Haven school. And this, uh, this little boy came to one of our meetings and, and he's just hissing, he's just hissing. And I called, told him mother, bring him up and put him to kneel down on this Bible. And I laid my hands on him and rebuked the spirit of deafness and dumbness. Three days after, this little boy is saying A, B, and C. And now they're not teaching him to talk. And I'm talking about the power of the word. Amen. We had this little example again in Trinidad. It's the first time I saw something like this. This little child, I went down with a, with a, a, a certain minister. We went down and we went this home having prayer meeting in the house. And I asked her sister, I said, what is it you want God to do for you? She says that she's got this little niece and the niece has cerebral palsy. The child cannot walk, she cannot talk, she cannot do anything. She's just lying down in the bed or lying down in the couch. I did not see the child. God as my witness, I did not see the child. I just prayed into, as I said, I didn't, I didn't pray for the oil. I prayed into the oil and commanded the word of the Lord and the anointing of God to change her situation, to enter into that oil. And the, the, the aunt of that child and went home and anointed the child with that oil. And I am hearing that that child, after a while, started to creep. She started to crawl and she was trying to walk, but they had to put her like on a brace or something like that. She's mm -hmm. eating, she's laughing, and not just that, but some of her words were also recognizable. As I'm saying, I believe that there is something about the word of the Lord that we tend to really not understand or we tend to like overlook that the bible is just a book this dusty old book that we hardly read with just these stories in it and because we have not really had that 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 sort of a relationship with god we receive wrongful information like through some of the songs that we sing that sometimes i think it wasn't holy ghost inspired like the song um yes jesus loves me it's something that i always talk about yes jesus loves me how do you know jesus loves you but yet there is no manifestation and you don't have a testimony and it's just based on what you read in this book because of what God did for Peter and Paul, but it has nothing to do with you. You must have a testimony to give. And your personal experience. Exactly, that's so that even when you go to the house of the Lord and you lift your hand, it must not be based on lies, but lifting your hand means that, 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 that not so much Yahweh, but the, the El Shaddai, the all-powerful God, he covered every aspect of my life. He didn't just deal with me financially, but he dealt with me bountifully, comprehensively. He touched me in a way that no one was able to. And this is what I'm saying, that even when you lift your hands in the house of the Lord, it must be as a result of what the word did for you. And I'm saying in Psalm 119, David spoke of it, the fact that he loved the law of the Lord, the word of the Lord. He loved it so much that he was sort of like reverencing the word of the Lord. But I'm saying there is something even about the word of the Lord that has the ability. It's not about you trying to be good or you trying to walk in the word or trying to work the word. No, but I'm talking about the fact that God is a God of specification. He knows your address. He knows every single thing about you. There's nothing Here that you cannot your hide. Head exactly. Numbered. He exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying I'm talking about the word of the Lord coming to you to locate you in your season to change your life around. You understand what I'm saying? This is what I'm saying. I believe that the word of the Lord is relevant and it's accurate, especially as it has to do not so much with the word that's already been written and the word that's been documented, but I'm talking about the word that God spoke over you when he said that... Um, he, 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 he lifted up his name above every other name mm -hmm. so that at the mention of his name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. But the thing is, is that he exalted his word his over name. your situation, over and above his very name, and that he's watching over his word and his promises over your to life, which it. are yea and amen, amen to perform. Amen. And I'm talking about a word that, that, that has to do with you in this season, that has the ability to turn your entire life around. And I'm thinking also that there are a lot of people that, as I'm saying, don't really understand the power of the word, in the sense that the word has the ability of minister to people who were in current situations and needed God's help help but yet God saw beyond a year and two years and that word has the ability to begin to catapult them or begin to bring them into the season and cause them to even begin to see the word even parading or walking even before them. Mm. 
Stevenson, as you're saying that, I, I just get a sense of uh, you just uh, looking into the camera and praying for and speaking directly into some people's situations because we may have viewers who like the impotent man, they either may be stuck, we may have some people who are in need of healing, we may have some people who who just need a word. So as the Spirit of the Lord leads you, you know, just look into that camera and address the audience. The Father, we thank you this afternoon. Father, we thank you for those people that have been waiting for 40 years, that's been waiting for 38 years. Now the Bible says weeping may have endured for a night, but for some people it's like the delivery date has been like long overdue. The curse of many generations has gone beyond the third and the fourth generations and they're still waiting on a miracle. I want to announce to someone this afternoon that this is the day of your visitation and that this is the day that the Lord has made. I want to, you know, I want to send a word to someone this afternoon that's been praying for God to release you and for God to set you free from your bondage. I want to declare to someone this afternoon that this is your season. It's time to get up. The Bible says that, um, as it said in the book of Isaiah, arise and shine because the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. I want you to stretch your hands. Those of you that's, that's viewing, I would like for you to just join me in, for you to stretch your hands even at the, 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 your TV screen and believe God with me this afternoon. Those of you that's bound and those of you that's stuck, I want to send a word. The Bible says that he, he didn't just send his word, but he says that his words would not return or ascend back unto him void until it did what it has been sent to do. So I send to you this afternoon, sir, madam, I send a word to you this afternoon and that the word of the Lord would find you and that the word of the Lord would locate you. And to you, ma'am, to you, sir where it seems as though you, nothing has been working for you. I send a word to you this afternoon and prophesy. I send an angel. I call even now the angels of the Most High God into this place now. I speak even now to your guardian angel, to that angel of the Lord that's been assigned to you even from birth. That the, the angels of the Lord now would now begin to take that word, begin to take your prophetic word that has the ability to break you into a season that has the ability to break the, 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 the handcuffs to be able to break those chains in the mighty name of Jesus. Stretch your hands. I declare over you sir, that whatsoever it is you put your hands to in the name of Jesus, that it shall prosper. I declare that every project that you have put your hands to, that you have failed, you have tried because of witchcraft, because of supernatural forces that's been working against you. In the name of Jesus, I declare that strength is coming to you. I declare that the wisdom of God is coming to you. I declare the anointing of God is coming unto you today. I say in the name of Jesus, rise up and begin to do what you could not do today. And for those of you that's sick, those of you that's been, been impotent, those of you that believe the report of the doctors, where the doctors said that you would never walk again. Even when the doctor said that this new situation will not change, that you've got to live like this, I declare in the name of Jesus that this is your hour to shine. 38 years you may have been in this situation, but I declare even as the Bible says that weeping may have endured for a night, but that joy is about to come. Now I speak to some muscles and I speak to some bones. I, I speak even now to some dead bodies. I, I speak even to you, sir, that, that you think as though your, your situation, that it's like you're like Lazarus, where you, you, you're like dead, as though like there's no way out, there's no hope in this situation. I speak to you this afternoon in the name of Jesus. I command now. Sir, I command you, madam, I command even now your bones to live. I prophesy on common movement in the name of Jesus. I command every pain, every affliction, every disease, every discomfort now to go in the name of Jesus. I curse sickness. I curse every infirmity. 
I command you even now. I command your bones to live. I prophesy even now an uncommon and knitting of your bones. I speak into your bones that your bones would live. I send the word of the Lord even now to locate you. I send the word of the Lord into that nerve cell. I send the word of the Lord today even into that bone. I send it even into your back. I command even now a new bone even to be placed in you. I command even the word of the Lord even now to begin to recreate even bones in you. I command you even now to get up, rise up, and live again in amen. Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Amen and amen and amen. You know, and after prayer like this, I, I want some of you who may be seated where you are, to just get up. It might just sound like a simple thing or ordinary thing, but your situation is turning around. And sometimes you have to do a physical thing because we are still in a physical world. So I want some of you to get up and just begin to turn around. What just you begin could not to do. out of time. But Amen. I mean, this was really, really powerful. You took a long time in coming, but I thank you that you're here today. And, you know, I pray that God will continue to bless you. And this will not be your last no, visit. But, won't. you know, I, I prophesy to you that you will even have your own I program. Will. I intend to. I Amen. Intend to. So, soon. viewers, this, this has been the outpouring. Not only for your refreshing the today, but for your turning around, for your crossing over, for your stepping into a bright and glorious future. Shalom. Let the power